Hi, I'm Virginia from Write Clinic. I've been a medical writer and content creator since 2020, and I'm also a registered pharmacist in the UK. So is AI a threat to medical writers? I think there's been a lot of fear mongering and also a lot of people who are just worried about the unknown and they're not sure if medical writers are still going to be needed in future. Well, the good news is that AI runs on data, which is created by humans. So if humans came first and AI came second and AI needs humans to keep working because someone needs to get the data to create the data and feed it into AI or research and feed it into AI, then humans will always be needed. <laughs> so you can probably start watching now. <laughs> but if you want to keep listening, then I've got a few thoughts on this. So as a medical writer, you're responsible for making sure that the information you are writing is accurate, which means that you've done the research, you found evidence to support it, and also you've identified where there is a lack of evidence. So if there is no evidence to support it or there's not great quality evidence, which let's face it, happens quite often, especially if it's something new. And also health information is changing all the time. So medical writers will always be needed in some shape or form when it comes to health information. And when it comes to AI, you can't just create technology and let it run forever. It needs to be constantly updated. So think about your apps that you have on your phone. You don't just download it and then forget about it. You're going to have to update it. Same with your computer. So medical writers might be involved in choosing the type of data that goes into an AI. And a lot of people have like a custom AI now for their company or for their work. And one of the big issues when AI first came out last year, it seems like such a long time ago, but people were putting data that was intellectual property or proprietary information into AI. And then that AI was basically keeping that information and then training on it and then regurgitating that information to other people who shouldn't have seen it. So I think it's important to keep in mind that if you're a medical writer, you will always be needed, but your role might change because you're now going to be working with this technology. And AI is not true AI, artificial intelligence, because it's not making something completely new out of nothing. So humans are the ones that do that. And also, it takes a long time to train a piece of technology to do what you want, whether that is coding it or giving it a certain prompt. So if you're not sure what a prompt is, it's when you type an instruction into AI to generate something for you whether that is text or image or video. And then you can also ask questions to see if it's made stuff up. And we call that hallucinations. So I would say generally, I'm pretty optimistic about AI being involved in not just medical writing, but in industries everywhere. And people will use it to their advantage. But also it does have a carbon footprint. So if you didn't know, it costs a lot more energy and is a little bit not so great for the environment if you're not using green energy sources to run a search on AI or to put a prompt into AI compared to just traditional searching, for example, on Google, on a search engine or on a web browser. So the reason why it probably takes more energy is because it's trying to search through a specific set of data and then find any patterns and then match it and then recreate what it's found in a conversational way so it looks like a human is typing and talking to you and all of that takes a bit more time and I think AI is interesting I think we will use it to our advantage as medical writers and also will be involved in shaping it into what we want it to be so there are policies and all kinds of things to stop AI from making us go backwards, if you like. So reintroducing things like um, ethnic and racial biases or uh, maybe things that, you know, are ethically not right. And I think also we want to be progressive as human society. And I think generally the, the take-home message is 
do not worry about it, but do expect that you may be requested to use it. And there are courses and things like that on certain AI. And I think if you are going to take one of those courses, then try not to focus on just one type of AI. There are different types. And also, if you're going to be working with a specific client, you will probably want to ask them their AI policy. So can you use it? Can't you use it? What types of AI can you use or can't you use? And if they use AI detection. So AI detection has come up before and some people were doing work and then they were submitting it to clients and the client would say, oh, this is like 90% AI generated. But the problem is that sometimes health information and research can be a bit slow. So when you are writing, you might be actually just rewording or recreating something that already exists, but maybe you're making it easier to understand for a different audience. Or maybe you're doing a deeper dive, so you're trying to do something in more detail. So we do get our information from multiple places, and usually if there's not much variety in terms of how much information there is on that one topic, then it can be difficult to um, be completely original, especially because you want to be citing your sources and those sources need to be credible. So I hope this little chat <laughs> has uh, given you some confidence as a medical writer and you can work from anywhere. And also you can be really flexible. There are so many different types of medical writing. And if you want to learn more about that, you can watch the next video where I talk more about the different types of medical writing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.